Hi there, and uh, thanks for joining me. I'm going to attempt to show you how we made the Scorpion and Sub-Zero costumes. Uh, here's a final version to kind of visualize what we did. Uh, first thing we started with was the masks. You want to grab some poster board and or construction paper and make templates. Um, this is actually version one of three for Sub-Zero. Um, we ended up having to make it three times to get it right. Keep your templates though because you never know if you're going to have to make another mask or use it to measure other things. Uh, here's the version two of the Sub-Zero mask. Uh, version three was just a little shorter but pretty much the same thing. Um, so you also use your templates to measure for other things. This is craft foam available at Michaels um, or other craft stores. Very, It's like a two millimeter. We used it to line the inside of the mask and the template made it easy to you know, fit it right inside uh, without having to remeasure anything. These are neodymium magnets placed at the four corners essentially of the mask. Um, magnets were sewn into the balacaba and the mask attaches directly to the balacaba that way. This is gutter mesh. We use that to vent. You can see on the outside makes a nice texture. We glued it in with maxi cure available at most hobby stores. Next you'll see acoustic cloth. It's a cloth that is used to cover speakers, home speaker systems. It's very breathable um, and lets a lot of sound and uh, air through. This is the final version essentially of what the Sub-Zero uh, mask looked like. Um, and it just attaches right to the balacaba. It doesn't come off. We did essentially the same thing for Scorpion. Uh, Scorp this is a Scorpion mask. Each mask was shaped to our specific you know, face. Um, so these masks are not necessarily interchangeable between all people. Uh, they don't fit necessarily every person. Uh, you can see where we split in the middle there. And we did that so that we could bring it together uh, by bracing it on the back side and using small hobby screws uh, to make kind of the curve of the nose, which you'll see in the next picture. We also dremeled out the vents very carefully um, so that you know there's venting for breathability. Uh, priming, wet sanding, priming, wet sanding, priming, wet sanding, uh, at least three times. Makes a very nice smooth finish with a high grit sandpaper. And then put at least three coats of uh, your final color. Uh, this is gold, um, very nice color by Krylon. Uh, neodymium magnets once again, and then some craft foam. You'll see it on the left side here to kind of make it all flush. We cut out the vents in the craft foam and place speaker cloth over the whole thing makes a very nice finish. Uh, when I take it off, it's actually black on the back side. You can't see anything. No magnets, no venting or anything. It looks pretty nice. Uh, and um, uh, you'll see in this next picture the final version on the Scorpion uh, mask. So that's how we made the masks. All right, uh, step two, the little things. Uh, there's a few things in this next little series here. Uh, we started with some styrene. You can get this at hobby stores, like where you would buy model trains. And I printed out a copy of the Mortal Kombat symbol. I cleaned it up in Adobe, taped it to the plastic, and then I cut through the paper into the styrene and got myself some lines. And I will not lie, this took forever. Um, it took me all night to do, I believe, both of them and uh, my thumb was probably sore for about three or four weeks. Um, you can see here I just slowly cut away through the styrene because it was I believe uh, 1.5 mil or 1 mil um, and I had to be very careful around the tongue and the fringes um, but anyway I got it to the size I wanted uh, and found these little cardboard discs at Michael's um, hobby store or craft store. Um, I don't know what they're used for but maybe ornaments uh, and so I had already planned it all out to make them the right size. I made two of them, uh, one for Sub-Zero, one for Scorpion. This is all the little spikes on Scorpion. Uh, I made a styrene pyramid, pushed it into clay four times, and then I started, uh, and then I baked it to make it hard, and then I started filling it with plaster of Paris. Um, so I made just a bunch of these little, basically, pyramids out of plaster of Paris using a clay mold that I just kind of made real quick. Um, and uh, you'll see that pizza boxes are phenomenal trays um, and since you're always eating pizza when you do these projects they, they find themselves to be abundant. So here you can say where I, see where I've made a ton of the little uh, pyramids and then, um, then I begin to clean them up by sanding the edges down or cutting them away with a knife. 
um, to kind of get them cleaned up. Um, plaster of Paris though is very chalky, so I covered it in just uh, an Elmer's, uh, Elmer's glue mixture, like kind of watered down just a little bit. The pennies are just to set the, set the pyramids on so that they didn't glue themselves to the paper. Uh, after they had the coat of Elmer's glue to make them nice and um, sealed, I painted them with silver uh, a couple of times. Uh, also, contacts um, for these costumes was a really a big bonus. The white contacts really made the eyes uh, pop for our costumes and really made a finishing touch. So, and that's the little things. All right, uh, step three here, arm and shin guards. Uh, we got some sheet metal from Home Depot uh, in the venting section. It's very thin sheets. And some craft foam, two millimeter craft foam from Michaels. We made the metal the size we wanted and glued the craft foam right to it. And um, this is just strips that we'll be using uh, in a couple more steps. Um, so we glued the craft foam right to the metal and trimmed it down about an eighth of an inch around it, um, which made a real nice smooth finish. Uh, and then here we've added the strips for texture, uh, made a real nice uh, texture look uh, on the shin guards. And then here you'll see a finished product. And then these are just strapped on with a type of Velcro that you can get at Walmart. It has a hook and loop on one side and the fuzzy on the other. It's kind of like Velcro in one little strip. These are the arm guards. Uh, here we've taped them down for placement. Real similar to the leg guards except that we gave it a black edged finish. Um, otherwise it's pretty much the same same method. Uh, on the arm guards, however, we glued the hook and loop um, Velcro that we found at Walmart uh, right to the arm, the back side of it, just like this. And it's curled up right now, but those do expand out and then they just attach to each other. It's really nice stuff. The scorpion ones I'm not so proud of, but this is how we did them. Uh, we cut two panels covered it with craft foam and all those little spikes that I made earlier in the presentation. And then I found a um, trim at uh, Joanne Fabrics, that gold rope, glued it on there with MaxiCure, and voila, that's pretty much it. All right, step four, the clothy stuff. Um, I don't have a lot of pictures of this, so I apologize, but here is Sub-Zero's uh, belt and uh, I guess it's loincloth. Um, kind of a final picture right there so you can visualize it. Um, that's the belt held with Velcro and then the loin cloth is also held with Velcro um, in place so we can actually move it if need be. First I took a section of blue fabric and sewed it on one side up the edge um, and then we turned it inside out and once we did that we get a nice uh, smooth um, product. And then we took plastic tubing and sewed it in each side. Um, as you can see here, you'll see a better picture in a moment from the other side, but basically that plastic tubing is sewn in place and that gives it a nice texture on the edges. It also makes it very rigid. Um, however, the plastic tubing also curled, which made problems for pictures and later on. Here's a scorpion's um, pattern. I, I made it as dark as I could, but uh, basically we used uh, a quilting pattern. Uh, I just sewed it uh, in a diagonal fashion. It made a very nice texture. Uh, as you can see close up here, I put batting on the inside to give it a little bit of thickness um, and just followed the pencil lines uh, for the um, for the sewing lines. Uh, here I'm checking out how it's going to look together with the black and the gold roping. Um, I actually took a nylon rope, put it inside of that gold fabric and uh, sewed it all together. The whole loincloth is actually fairly thick. Um, here you see the, um, I want to say it's the back of one of the front sections where there's gold and then we laid in the yellow and the, um, the yellow quilting and the uh, black stripes that uh, that made for the final product. Here you'll see where the, the quilting for each of the front pieces of armor was done um, before the black cloth was laid down each side. In the next picture you'll see that. Uh, the black cloth uh, about an inch and a half on each side. And then I also made a back panel to keep it uh, from falling off my back. I did this for both costumes. Uh, we basically kind of did the same thing for both of them. So that's the clothy stuff.